Well, Chucky, thanks for at least getting that much done. I appreciate you giving us an opportunity to have some kind of a Tech Tuesday conversation. I know folks are intrigued and curious what I'm doing with the car. Well, you're still on the list. Get the rest of it. <laughs> I'm on the list. <laughs> Gonna kill them. I know. We haven't uh, we haven't done the tires. We haven't done the brake fluid yet. Uh, I won't need the brake fluid for the event I was just telling you about in Toledo, but I am going to need it for pit race and some other tracks that I want to do this year, so stay tuned. Uh, I'm using my car uh, as it was intended, but again, for my retail representation, I'm using that car as a tool to share with you guys, uh, inform you guys, educate you guys, and, uh, you know, for the things to do and not to do, as we've learned already from the 21. <laughs> That's why we're here now. <laughs> Come on, let's just be truthful. You're a kid out playing, and they benefit from it. Okay, <laughs> we'll go with that. That's good, that's right. I'll grow old, I just won't grow up. There you There's go. There's nothing wrong with that, brother. That's, that's right. One more time. Just quick. So on that fuse also was the under dash fuse box. Uh-huh. That okay. runs everything. <clears throat> I bet you that's what a cotton is. Uh, here's what I would do. I would go to the underhood fuse boxes or fuses in it uh -huh. and start pulling them one by one and see if the draw goes away. We're trying to get started. Isolated. Chuck's giving advice to another. If technician. the draw's still there with the fuses, then it's gotta you. be something other than that fuse box. All these guys okay. ask for his advice. All right, let me just double check the shot, make sure we look good. I'm not gonna be, what are you doing, dude? What are you doing in my chair? Setting the stage, backseat driver. You need to be back there, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I watched Sunday's video. Get back here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> if you missed Sunday's video, a wonderful drive down Ohio's 555. A lot of response from that, actually. We're going to do that again in October. You should come join us. We'll do that on a Sunday. Well, you want uh, me to bring my wife's Mustang? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can ride in the back. <laughs> it's going to be a great time. We'll let you know when we're actually going to do that. And we're going to capture three more video views that you didn't see in Sunday's video. And that will make it more fun for all the participants. So make sure you subscribe to this channel. You don't miss that. The triple nickel coming in October. The fall foliage through there. Oh, my gosh, dude. That's be gonna beautiful. Be, it's going to be great. But seriously. Thanks for staying after hours. <laughs> Messing up with your backseat driver. I just didn't want Ryan to go too fast. He was so excited to get in the car, and he's just like, oh. he's like, Dad, this Z51, it feels so good. I go, dude, would you slow down? I can't, I can't even see the people back there. <laughs> we're trying to film this. You forget what we're doing. It's like, oh, no, they're fine. I'm but like, no, they're not. <laughs> And then I stopped at one stop sign just before we finished the route, and I said, hey, I'm sorry. Are we okay? Are we going too fast? Said, oh, no, we love it. Let's go. And, of course, that guy in the front row, he's got his Ron Fellow shirt on. So, well, yeah. yeah, we were going fast <laughs> enough for him. So it was a fun time. Check out that video link down below. I know a lot of people had shows over the weekend. In fact, I missed the Roscoe Village show. I'm sorry, Classic Glass. I couldn't be there. Um, I just, when I'm not home, uh, I'm doing stuff for work. So I had to be home, cut grass, and do just home stuff. So I missed you guys. Uh, but I'm uh, surprised the one guy commented you didn't have no traffic. That's... No. Well, here's the key. We actually, just at the very end, we did. Somebody in front, a couple people coming at you, but nobody in front of us the whole trip until the very end when we got closer to some houses and stuff. Sure. But we started in the morning early, and that was the key, so that's there what we're going to do next time in October. Seriously. I got props for today. Oh, okay. <laughs> a quick conversation. I'm going to show you a clip here in a second. Uh, a lot of people said, Rick, you're going to start into your tracking. I let you know that he finally put the two quarts of transmission fluid in. We still got to do high temp brake fluid, but I don't need that just yet. Uh, I'm going to get on track this coming Sunday. A couple of people already said, hey, we're going to join you. We're going to come watch you. We're going to participate. That's great. At the Toledo Airport, Swanton, Ohio. I'll put the information up on the screen here. The address if you want to come out and see us at our first autocross. And this is going to be more than a typical low speed autocross so I'm looking forward to that sorry drop my drop Even my the email thinks you should be in the back seat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> welcome to Tech Tuesday hello <laughs> slow down <laughs> oh but you're gonna see a clip here in a second where Chuck is gonna put on not usually he does that I might be wrong when you walk back up stop and see if it fits no you probably no we're 
we're talking during compressor break. You're probably <laughs> yeah. not wrong, and that's why I'm ticked off, because you're probably right. Uh -huh. uh, more on that here in just a second. But a lot of people have asked in past videos, said, hey, Rick, you're going to talk about your Z51 rear brake air ducts. We're going to show you that clip here in a minute and let you learn from that. If you're going to get out there and do some tracking, you really even if you don't have, which I didn't do last year, and I didn't learn from my own mistakes, if you have a non-Z51, you can put these rear brake ducts on and help keep those brakes cool. Also, too, because I have aftermarket wheels, that's what we were talking about during compressor brake, uh, you have a 22-millimeter lug nut on your C8 Corvettes. Those are torqued Correct. at what, Chuck? 140 foot-pounds. Right, so now my aftermarket wheels have a 19-millimeter, and it's easy to confuse that because in the 19-millimeter, was on your C7s, and those were a 100-pound foot torque. So I go to take these off and go, Rick, no, it's still 140, even though it's a 19 millimeter. Don't forget that. That's important. Correct. We wanted to share with you. But you just said, what about this? Well, the wheels that you put on, they, the reason they had to drop down to a 19 is because the opening's not that big. So you have to have a thin wall socket. So I don't know if that's going to work or not. Yeah, you can I, try it and see. I just, these are beautiful. Non-marring. I just got these from ACS Composite. I bought these in a three-piece uh, kit. I forget what the other one is. I think it's a 21, but I need a 22 and a 19. But now you're telling me this might not even work. Might not even work. Okay, I'll let you know. <laughs> All right, welcome to Tech Tuesday. We've got some good-looking cars. Beautiful ride segment. We'll come up and we're done with a couple quick emails. All right, this one comes from Chicago, and Frank says, I'm a proud owner of a C8 Z06. I have 1,400 miles on my vehicle, and it's currently in the shop for an oil change. However, however, after draining all the oil and adding eight new quarts of oil, it shows on the dipstick there's two quarts too many. GM Techline was unable to assist the technician. Have you dealt with this issue? I have not changed the oil in a Z06 yet. I will tell you I had a PDI come in that I thought was two quarts full, over full of oil. So I drained the oil out. Then started the car and run it up to temperature. That was a Z06 too, wasn't it? Yes, it was a Z06. Okay. I had to put the two quarts back in and I just took out. So I wasn't sure what all that was all about. Uh, like I said, I haven't changed the oil. The only thing I've done, like I said, the first PDI Z06 I got in, I brought it up to what I thought was the right temperature. Maybe it was. I can't even remember now. I'm sure it was. Right. Pulled a dipstick and it looked like it was two quarts over full on oil. So I know the oil on the Z06 dipsticks come, the oil comes this far up on the dipstick. I mean, it's a long way. It's not a long dipstick like on a regular C8. They have a short little stubby dipstick and the oil comes up probably half or three quarters of the way for it before it's full. So make sure they're looking at the dipstick correctly. And the vehicle's got to be running too, correct? Yeah, the like vehicle has to be running, yes. Okay, all right, you got another one, go ahead. Yeah, this one comes from Michael, says, longtime Corvette fan, my midlife crisis vet was purchased back in the late 80s, a 72 or Ontario, Ontario orange, orange convertible. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, anyways, I recently bought a 2008 Z51 six-speed hardtop under 20,000 miles. Say hello to Candy. Now yeah, you put a picture in there. That'll be in the right segment coming okay. up. Okay. When turning left or going slow, I hear a scary clunk from the passenger side suspension. I put it on jack stands. I couldn't find anything loose by hand. Tie rod control arms, such as all that, seems tight. So evidently, I need a second opinion. I am a long-time home wrench and do all the work on my own. But I do know my limits. Automatic transmission, shimmies, differential gears, plastic gauge. How do I go about finding the right dealer with the Corvette mechanic I can trust? Is there are certain GM certifications or trains I should look for? Well, first thing you need to do is look for a Corvette technician. <laughs> <laughs> Are you that technical? Yes, Are I you haven't been a mechanic for years. Yeah. With all the crap that they have in these cars today, okay, we're no longer. So mechanics. the classification of mechanic to technician, there is mechanics work up on the lube rack changing oil. Okay, uh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> now I know. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but in reference to your question, the only thing I can think of is maybe a shock absorber, a front shock absorber that's starting to go bad. That's giving you that clunk. Even though everything seems tight, you have, you know, the, the cylinder inside the cylinder that could be causing that clunk would be my only guess okay. without looking at the car. Yeah. It's amazing to think how old those cars are now. Yeah, I mean, right? a 2008. Oh, my gosh. 
That's crazy. Here's right. a quick one from uh, Fred. Thanks for watching the channel. Quick question here. A couple other questions were not pertinent to Tech Tuesday. Uh, thank you, Fred. He says here, the last few numbers of my 2023 VIN are P55. 00468. Can you tell me what number my car was made? Well, each car in 2023, there's different models. Of course, you've got Stingray, you've got Z06. You have CTF Capture Test Fleet cars, and then you have Anniversary cars. So you will essentially have three number ones, and you'll have three number ones for Z06 too, for the Capture Test Fleet, for the Z uh, 70th Anniversary, and for the regular Z06 models. So it's confusing. So. Ordinarily, someone would look at this and say, well, you are 468th car made for 2023. That's incorrect. Depends on what model and what sequence vehicle that you have. So in this particular sequence, yes, your car is the 468th car made for that sequence, not counting the CTF cars or the anniversary cars. One more, this one comes from Ted. Unfortunately, I became a follower of your blog videos after I had taken my car in for a service, so I was not able to take your advice about paying for just the oil change and waiting to take advantage of the free service included in my transmission service. So my question for Chuck is, I had my oil change and transmission filter at my first visit while I was one year old with 3,000 miles. Now I'm coming up on second annual service with about 6,000 miles. I'll be doing my oil change at home. At what mileage or time frame should I have the transmission serviced again? At this upcoming service, should I have the transmission filter changed? Boy, I tell you guys, we get this question a lot and we're gonna to continue to update you on this and have this conversation because of the ownership span that is starting to ex ex extend yep. and uh, extra used cars that are getting into the marketplace and it's important to know this. In fact, I had one of the guys uh, that I was talking to uh, this very subject, almost an identical email. He says, hey, I'm, I'm two months away from my two years, but I'm only at 6,000 miles. I said, well, you're not gonna drive 1,500 miles in two months, so get your oil changed now because you're in season and it's hard to get scheduled. So yeah, it's okay to have that oil changed now, but it is important as Chuck and I talk about constantly here on the Tech Tuesday segments, up as close as you can for this DCT transmission filter to the 7,500 miles or the two years. But in regards to the oil change, what do you suggest? Well, no, he's talking about the transmission. Right. Yeah. But well, I mean, oil changes, you've said many times over, it could be a year. Yeah, it, it should it, be a change. Regardless of miles, it should be done at least once a year. Correct. And the, the percentage usually gets down, so do that. Spend that on your own regard. Right. And Chuck tells you guys, make sure the service writer, not the technician, uh, make sure... <laughs> Is that what you call them, service writers? Yes. Yeah. I know what I know what you really call them, oh, but right. that's okay. <laughs> that's, we won't say that. Yeah. But make sure they don't claim your first service, so that's still kind of in the in the cookie jar for you because it's it's a very expensive uh, yes. uh, service uh, interval, and, as as I know from my previous twenty one. <laughs> uh, keep track of it and don't let you want don't want to lose out. You yeah. don't want to let it run out. Yeah. And always, always, always. Once again, the biggest reminder I have for this situation is if you've had the two extra quarts of transmission fluid uh, added. Yeah. Always tell the advisor, because they probably, my advisor asked because I beat him over the head and tell him, did you ask, 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 ask. It's important to know that for you. Yes, because if I pull that plug, I'm looking for to add fluid in. If I pull the plug, two liters is going to come out on the ground, and then we got to start over and put the two extra liters back in. And we've done, I've done the math on this. There's 33.8 or ounces in one liter of fluid. Okay. So you can do five of these DTC filters before you lose one liter. Okay. So, so you it, can do five of them before you have to add a liter back in. Yeah, so it's important to have that DCT. And, is, and I apologize. That was yeah. his question as far as changing that filter. Right. Well, know. I just had a customer come up from West Virginia here last week. He was at 6,300 miles, I think. And he probably wasn't going to hit the 7,500. Mm -hmm. And I told him, my, the best advice I had to him is, you, you know, you're close enough. You don't want to go over, obviously. And what you can do after you do the 6,000, instead of doing 50, and the next one at 15, do the next one at 14. Just back it up 1,000 or 1,500 miles. Right. So, but we've said it before and I'll say it again, I don't think you can over-service these transmissions. Yep. You know, we change oil every 5,000 miles. They want this DCT filter changed there all the time because it's the lifeline of the transmission. So. It really is. 
Yeah. yeah. We proved that on my 21. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, uh, I felt self-conscious that I needed to change all that transmission flow before I sold it to Pete down in Corpus Christi. And you told me off camera, you said, Rick, you just wasted your money there. It didn't It didn't need to be done. You've been over-servicing it, and it looked like brand new. Sure. The DCT canister is doing its job. One of the other reasons, besides the 70th anniversary acknowledgement, is I got a 23, is if you toggle over on your steering wheel to the right in the maintenance tab down there, it gives you the transmission filter life. And that is the DCT canister that it's reading. So I'm watching that closely in my car right now, about 35, 3,800 miles, and I'm down into the 50 percentile already. Sure. And I've not done a tracking session. I'm kind of curious on where that's going to be after my Toledo event. So we'll watch that. We'll share that with you guys so you can learn from my experiences. And that really is one of the main goals here on this channel besides the fun and the entertainment that we try to bring you. So thank you so much for joining us. Let's break away, show you that clip right now talking about tracking and what I'm going to do with my Z51 rear brake at with my Z51 rear brake air duct with my with my Z51 what I'm going to do with my Z <laughs> get in the back <laughs> I just look at this <laughs> hey, how about this my car is actually on the rack with Chuck in service getting that service that I need so much. We're almost done doing a couple of things to the car, but I needed his expertise to get this done. Hello. I'm sorry, you talking to Corey? Yeah, don't. Oh, here we go. One more shot. As they say, don't look at me with that tone. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of you guys were asking, hey, can you show this on Tech Tuesday? We talked about it, finally get an opportunity to show it to you. And thanks to your suggestion, when you have a Z51 car, these brake ducts to draw in air, uh -huh. what? No. Oh, I thought, okay. He looked like he wanted to say something. Anyways, these brake ducts draw in air that are used only for the track, but Chuck had a great suggestion. He says, Rick, I want to help you out a little bit. He goes, what I want to do is put the top piece on only, then all I got to do is bolt on the bottom piece. That's because I know you plan on doing a lot of tracking. Right. If you're not, I wouldn't even put these on. Okay, I got you. Right. But, but don't leave them on because they're going to drop down below the bottom of the car and they can catch yeah, debris in there. Oh, yeah, by a whole bunch. And they'll catch debris in there and they can catch on fire because after you get off the track, those, uh, as we know from last year, <laughs> those things get pretty hot back there. But these are put on during the PDI, but you can see they're flat so they don't pick up debris. These are for track use only. And as you can see, now there's nothing to scoop because this is up flat pretty much. Right. That's why I suggest you go ahead and put these on. Okay. But right. like I said, only because I know you plan on doing a lot of tracking. Right. This culture within the Corvette culture, you got to see that live and in person. It's so much fun seeing all these different people, all these different generations of Corvettes and what they're doing with their car. They're out there driving it and having fun. There might be an opportunity also for you to register last minute so you can participate in this event. But at a 1.3 mile course at the Toledo Airport, uh, we're gonna get up to some speeds that are gonna be not, not deemed low speed. So I'm really looking forward to that. Now, when you put the other piece on, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, and they're seven millimeter headed. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, that's what I need. Okay, so seven is what I need for these. Yep. All right, fantastic. I really might have to buy a, might have to buy a toolbox. <laughs> right. <laughs> I already bought the impact wrench that he suggested. Oh yeah. I haven't taken it out of the box yet, by the way. Yeah. No, not yet. I got to charge up the battery and all that, so we can change out the tires. You better get on it. I know. There's even, I'll tell you guys this too, because we're talking about tracking, some of the stuff I want to do, because I want to keep the miles down off track tires. The high speed tires I want to get, which I got to ask you a question too here in a second off camera. Uh, the high speed tires I want to get, uh, I don't have yet. So I'd like to drive to the event on these. And there's a couple companies out there, you guys have probably seen them, and they're actually pretty nifty. They mount right up and through here a little mini trailer hitch. So you can get a small trailer to take with your car. I don't know about the wiring harness. I'm going to ask Chuck about that and once I get more information from the company. And then I can put my tires on there, tool kits and that kind of stuff, go to the event, switch these out, and then drive home on the all seasons. Kind of what I'm thinking anyways. That's that's the goal. Sounds like a plan. That's a way to see if he's going to say anything. Well, you're putting a trailer on a Corvette. You're an idiot. Just say it. That's fine. Wow, they wow. appreciate you being honest. No. That's it's, great. It's different. You better take two vehicles. Yeah, it's yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's hard sometimes to do that. So that's what I'm thinking about. I mean, then I can go to events and put like my tent and table and that kind of stuff I've on there. I've seen these C8s on YouTube with trailer hitches. Yeah, absolutely. Stuff, so. Oh, heck yeah. Yeah. I might be one of them. 
Hey, thanks for watching. I'm glad. Uh, seriously, you stayed after hours. That means a lot to me. It means a lot to the audience. We get Absolutely. Con- you don't even see the emails I'm getting, the texts that I'm getting, and it means so much to me. It really makes me realize we are connecting with our Corvette community. So uh, for us to take the time, uh, we enjoy it. Absolutely. Sometimes it's, it's a matter of time to take the time. But you guys take the time to watch it. We do appreciate that. So we're done talking cars. Let's show off some cars. What do we got for them, Chuck? Your beautiful ride. Yeah, baby. <laughs> And I didn't understand that you 